Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, and we'll plan it. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from Astana, Kazakhstan, talking about the Expo 2017 Future Energy. I'm here with uh, Rapil Josephayev, who is the Expo Commissioner and Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. And thank you, sir, for your time. And I must say that the organization and the effort is excellent, and things are going uh, very well. But welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Я очень рад, что сегодня вы здесь и что вы являетесь свидетелем подготовки к Экспо 2017. Я вас всех приветствую, журналистов и, конечно же, уважаемую такую редакцию. И я надеюсь, что очень много людей будет заинтересованы после этого интервью приехать в Казахстан. So I'm very glad to see you here in Kazakhstan, and I'm very pleased that you are witnessing such a great event in the organization of the Expo 2017. I would like to welcome you all here, and I hope that after these interviews, more people will get interested in the Expo 2017. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, it's uh, very impressive that Kazakhstan is the first nation in Central African, uh, Central Asian republics, and also of the CIS nations that's offering such an uh, international uh, exhibition. Tell us a little bit about the interest and excitement for Kazakhstan itself. большой интерес вызывает у мирового сообщества, что впервые в Центральной Азии проводится такое мероприятие, как Экспо-2017. Это победа не только Казахстана, проведение такого престижного международного мероприятия, но и победа всего нашего региона, Центральной Азии и наших соседей, которые могут посетить, приехать к нам. И Астана станет площадкой на в семнадцатом году для показа новых технологий в области энергетики наша тема энергия будущего поэтому она очень привлекательна so um, we are very glad that uh, the interest is shown not, uh, to the Expo, and uh, this is the first time when Expo is held in Central Asian countries, and this is a victory not only for Kazakh people and Kazakhstan, but for the whole region of Central Asia, who can come to us and see all the developments, and Astana will be the platform to showcase all the new technologies in the sphere of green and uh, uh, alternative energy. I think what is very interesting and very exciting uh, about all of this is that you're actually making a real effort to invite the emerging market nations all over the globe, whether it's from Africa, Latin America, uh, the South Pacific, Southeast Asia. What do you see for the benefits to Kazakhstan to have these countries to be invited and to be showcased as with the developed nations from around the globe. Вы сегодня проходит второе собрание участников участников международной выставки, и вы уже сами видите, какой большой интерес. Сто представители 104 стран приехали к нам на это собрание, и даже те страны, которые еще не подтвердили свое участие. 10 международных организаций, и это вызывает уже большой интерес стран для участия на нашей выставке. И, конечно же, тема выставки, она интересна всем регионам мира, и каждый, даже та страна, которая не имеет возможности 
внедрять какие-то новые технологии по альтернативным или возобновляемым источникам энергии, она может посмотреть, что в мире делается в этой области и, конечно, поделиться опытом. So today we have the second Expo 2017 international participants meeting and uh, you can see the interest shown by the world community to our exhibition and here we have guests from 104 countries and even those countries that have not yet confirmed their official participation in the Expo 2017 are present here. And we also have representatives of 10 international organizations present in the IPM, and all these prove the interest of the international community. So the theme of the Expo 2017, Future Energy, is very interesting for the whole world, and many countries that maybe don't have an opportunity to develop alternative energy sources in their countries can um, here see the experience of other countries and maybe then implement in their states. I think another thing that's quite impressive is that the president of your country has taken a great personal interest in this Future Energy Expo 2017. And so his uh, influence and his opinions are reaching around the globe, way beyond the borders of Kazakhstan. Uh, tell us a little bit about the importance of having a president that's so interested and so willing to contribute to the leadership of this and designating you as the commissioner for this uh, to make this a international success. Конечно же, хотелось бы прежде всего сказать, что идея проведения Экспо, она, конечно же, принадлежит нашему президенту. Посещая выставку Экспо в Сарагосе, наш президент как раз дал поручение, а почему Казахстан не может провести такую выставку Экспо у себя в стране. И дал нам поручение заниматься этим, и мы вели переговоры, потом делали заявку, и в трудной борьбе, но мы победили и за право проведения с большим отрывом. Вы помните, как мы боролись за это право, посещали страны, и президентом объявлен этот проект как национальный проект. Поэтому все казахстанцы задействованы и в этом мероприятии и желают, чтобы выставка прошла на самом высоком уровне. И мир мог увидеть нас, мы могли показать миру себя. Тем более, что в этом году мы справляем 25-летие своей независимости. Есть такие инициативы нашего президента, главы государства, которые прозвучали на Генеральной Ассамблее ООН по открытию в Астане Международного центра по развитию зеленых технологий. И также нашему президенту принадлежит инициатива как глобальная энергоэкологическая стратегия устойчивого развития в 21 веке и программа партнерства «Зеленый мост», которая получила широкую поддержку на конференции ООН по устойчивому развитию РИВО плюс 20. И мы продолжаем эту работу. И есть наши планы в развитии зеленой экономики к 2050 году. Планируется увеличение доли возобновляемых источников энергии до 50%. So, uh, of course, first of all, the idea of holding uh, the Expo 2017 in Kazakhstan was initiated by our president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. And when he was visiting the Expo in Saragossa, he made a task for us to organize such an exhibition in Kazakhstan. So after that, we began to hold negotiations and we initiated our bid to host the Expo 2017. And you know that uh, we was honored to hold this exhibition. So uh, you can also remember our bidding process when we were visiting different states, uh, talking about our opportunities of Kazakhstan. And the president, uh, Nusultan Nazarbayev, 
uh, declared this initiative to be a national project. That is why all the people, all the citizens of Kazakhstan are interested in holding this event to show our achievements to the whole world. And as you know, this year we also celebrate the 25th anniversary of the independence of Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, President Nozultan Nazarbayev also proposed some initiatives during the 17th session of the General Assembly of the UN. And one of them was the establishment of the International Center of Green Technologies and Investment Projects in Kazakhstan. And uh, he also initiated such projects as the Global Energy Efficiency Initiative in the 21st century and the Green Bridge that were welcomed during the Paris um, Conference on Climate Change. And uh, in future, we are also planning to increase the share of renewable energy sources used in the energy balance. So we want to uh, reach the number, uh, the figure of 50% of renewable energy capacity. Yes, that is a very important and impressive number. And uh, we've been actually sharing that on uh, Emerald Planet TV about your very ambitious uh, project. Uh, we're getting close. We have about time for about two more questions. And the one I would like to ask is about this expo is going way beyond 2017 in as we move towards 2050. Uh, the facility itself, I understand, is being built for uh, future investments and as a business center. Give us a little information about that, please. Конечно же, после <coughs> вопрос использования площадей после выставки, он всегда ставился у организаторов выставки. Мы изучали этот опыт. Конечно же, различный был опыт стран по использованию зданий после выставки. Некоторые здания простаивались, дороги оставались неиспользованными, но у нас по поручению главы государства После 2017 года, после выставки, вся территория выставки будет переходить Астанинскому финансовому, международному финансовому центру. Сегодня об этом сказал уже руководитель международного финансового центра господин Келимбетов, какие планы по развитию этого центра, приглашение всех международных финансовых структур, банков. И, и конечно же, будем, мы изучаем опыт финансовых центров мировых, как Дубайский финансовый центр, как в других странах. Поэтому мы хотим, чтобы финансовая часть этого привлекала на этот центр работал не только на Казахстан, но на весь наш регион. Of course, uh, we have studied the opportunity to use those facilities of Expo 2017 in future, and the President Nazarbayev uh, made a task to use all these facilities after the exhibition in 2017. We have studied the experience of the world, and somewhere these facilities were not used, but we are planning to uh, use these facilities for the International Financial Center. As Mr. Kellenbetov said during the IPM session, we are now studying the experience of other international financial centers, for example, in Dubai, and we want to attract the whole world to be participated here. This is very impressive. Thank you very much. And thank you. This is Dr. Sam Hancock, live from Astana, Kazakhstan, as we create the Emerald Planet. Dude, are you sure you want this tattoo? Because just do it. Some mistakes in life are permanent, like hearing loss. To learn how to protect your hearing, visit ASHA.org. You've probably heard about heart disease, but did you know that it's the number one killer of women nationwide? Heart disease claims more lives each year than breast cancer, lung cancer, or strokes combined. But there are steps you can take to protect yourself against it. 
For more information on how you can prevent heart disease, contact your local American Heart Association or visit their website at www.americanheart.org. Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop and Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from uh, Santi in Kazakhstan, here at the Green Expo 2017 introduction. And I have a gentleman sitting right beside me who's been involved in many expos around the globe over the last number of years. This is Ricardo Gigolatti. He is the architect and program manager for Senmeco. And uh, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Well, we're really glad to have you. And we were talking about the work that you've done with Azerbaijan, which I've been in that country. It's a very beautiful country. And other countries, tell us a little bit about your work as your own company, and then we'll talk about the Green Expo. Yes. So, uh, Symmetrico is a company uh, who was, was born in 2007, and uh, they, they is uh, an agency of creativity. But we are really uh, like a storyteller. We, um, we love uh, stories, uh, and we like uh, to uh, narrate properly. So, the idea was to, uh, to preserve, to preserve the, um, uh, the idea from the concept uh, and bring it, uh, bring it to, the, to the end. The, to the to touch base, so for, it's very important for us to work in an uh, extensive network uh, with uh, several pro professional between uh, creative uh, designer, uh, architect, engineer, and project manager. What uh, we care a lot uh, is about uh, um, the managing of the idea, the care of the idea to guarantee the final results. Now, looking at this, in today's uh, world with the Internet, people can go on, they can surf the Internet, they can find out about different countries, various technologies, uh, the new movements as far as uh, green energy, like with future energy here in Kazakhstan. So why an expo in the 21st century? It's still a, a really uh, good experience because uh, um, it allowed to the people to, to touch, to feel uh, how uh, the country, a different country, can uh, uh, relate uh, with uh, the, the theme of the expo. For instance, uh, um, uh, Food for Life in uh, Expo in Milan, every country has the opportunity to, um, to, make, uh, uh, to make the people taste and to make the people feel uh, the idea of food and the idea of uh, hospitality in, uh, in the, the different country. So also in a global era uh, of, uh, of internet, uh, the, the opportunity to, to have a, a real taste of things, uh, it's really something important to preserve. Now looking at the storytelling, and you say you're the giant storytellers for the world, and so you want, but you want to take it all the way through to the initial concept of what is the story about to you communicate this to the greater audience. Yeah. So how do you do that? And what is that sequence to make sure, one, you identify the right story, and at the same time, to be able to adequately communicate that to that greater audience? The first step to do is to listen. Listen is really important. It's really important to uh, be in touch uh, with the country is why, uh, the, the reason why we are here now. It's important to be in touch with the people and uh, to listen, to listen to story, to read a lot about uh, the countries. Uh, and, uh, and then it's really important to cooperate with the countries. For, uh, for Azerbaijan, for instance, uh, we had uh, this opportunity to work with a wide uh, group of people from um, uh, natural historian, uh, from um, historian politician, that uh, they explained us a lot of uh, value they'd like to preserve and to represent to the other people. So when uh, you have this opportunity, you can, uh, you can save, uh, you can save some uh, 
values, and then uh, you have to understand uh, in uh, which way you can uh, uh, put this value onto the public uh, and to explain to the people for the entertainment, but for the, all the, the entertainment. Well, there's a huge story in Kazakhstan. Astana is a very new city. It's a capital city that's newly created by this uh, oil and natural gas rich country. But at the same time, it has a very ancient history that goes back literally thousands of years. So how do you combine this very ancient story with something that's, in essence, very new? This is uh, one of the most engaging uh, uh, thing. And uh, again, uh, what we did uh, in Azerbaijan is quite similar because they have an ancient, uh, really uh, important history, but now they are really projected to the future. So uh, it's important to narrate this part. So what, is, uh, uh, what are the roots of the country and what can uh, they um, mutuate to, uh, to the future for the energy, the energy of the future. So this is really important, this link between uh, the, the, the roots of the country and the will to go further. Mm -hmm. Now you have a special challenge but also a special opportunity in Kazakhstan. It's the first of these expos in all of uh, Central Asia and the former CIS countries of the Soviet Union. And so in a sense, it's really coming out to creating their own new history, if you will. And, but they're really, in a sense, representing the whole region. So how do you mold this story that it's, it's a Kazakh story, but yet it's a regional story that you're taking then to the world? Yeah. This would be interesting. We are uh, we are still studying, so it will be will be interesting how we will uh, represent in the in Kazakh and for the and for the countries that we will be honored to to represent uh, this time. So, you know, you will see you'll see what uh, what happens. Yeah. Well, it, it's really interesting that you have. It's almost like it's a uh, a series of riches that you have to tap into as far as Kazakhstan itself, Astana being a new city, and then all these uh, regional actors, plus the world that's going to be coming here, because just with this, there's, oh, what, 110 countries represented. So there's a great interest in this. So from now on, what are kind of the steps as you march towards 2017 but then you go beyond that because this is a story that wants to continue on all the way to 2050 and beyond. But um, actually, I don't know. We are now facing, uh, facing the phase of, uh, of design. So, and this will be uh, the moment to, uh, to, to listen, to take uh, all the information, all the, uh, the feeling that we can uh, get it. And uh, in the, um, after four, five, six months, uh, will be the time to represent this uh, uh, to, the, to the design and then to start, uh, to start with installation. And um, it will be interesting, the, um, the mark that will this, uh, this experience through Expo in 2017 will, will stay for the future. Looking at uh, an expo that's a special environment, it's created to be within a, a city, a country, within a region, what do you have to think about when you're thinking about the expo? It's been around for over 160 years, so it has its own very rich, deep history but yet it's constantly renewing itself every two years. So what do you have to think about in terms of just the expo itself so that it continues to share its story as well as the story of the locality where it's being located? Uh, it's nice, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a really uh, nice challenge for Expo um, in, this, uh, in this era. But uh, when I speak to people that are involved from, uh, from uh, many years in uh, Expos, what I see is that um, it's, still, uh, it's still the moment uh, to, um, to be engaged in this kind of things. Uh, it's a good moment to, uh, to face the new challenge that the world is uh, giving to, to the Expo. And, uh, is a good, uh, I think, is a good idea to um, to make the people and the countries communicate.
communicate uh, in, a, in a peaceful environment. And uh, it's, really, it's really important because the, all the, uh, the theme that the Expo are facing are always uh, the theme that uh, um, the world care, the food, the, um, the problem of, uh, of the energy, that now is really, I think, one of the most important problems that we have in the, in the world. So this is it's really, um, it's really interesting how uh, all the, um, the bureau and all the expo represents uh, can uh, imagine uh, how to talk to the world. Mm. Uh, looking at this as, as far as uh, moving towards the future and uh, looking at the country itself, what do you think uh, the countries that are observing this? There are many here from the continent of Africa, Southeast Asia, even a few from uh, Latin America. They're looking at, should we be doing this as a city and as a country in the future as we go towards 2050? What do you think they need to be considering, to be thinking about as they try to shape their story to present to Expo to say, we need to be next in this process? Mm. It's difficult to say. Uh, for sure, they have to consider uh, what they would like to uh, present uh, to the to the world, and it's really important uh, which role they would like to play in the in the world uh, uh, in the world contest. So this is really important to think what they would like to express and represent for the world. So uh, as a country, you know, you have very diverse countries, like uh, countries across the African countries, uh, continent. They uh, have many uh, different resource bases, uh, different cultures, languages. And then you look at uh, Latin America, Southeast Asia, even the uh, South Pacific. Very different types of origins for all of these people. Uh, when they're talking to their citizens, how should they be conveying the idea of an expo? And this is as a people and as a country, this is what we want to convey the best of you to the world. How, do, how should they go about that process? But, um, and, and let me ask this, should they have someone like you, your company, to be engaged at the very beginning? Or is it after they've decided as a city, as a country, how they want to communicate or what they want to communicate? It depends from countries. Um, I think that it's good to have uh, foreign people in, with which uh, they can talk to understand uh, uh, from different point of view the va their values. So it's important also to, um, uh, to have uh, meetings with different people. And um, what they have to tell is the proud that they have uh, of their uh, origins. So I think uh, this is important. Uh, we've run out of time. We've got 30 seconds. What would you like to convey about your company to the world about why they should work with you as they think about an expo in the future? 30 seconds, please. Uh, our claim is uh, when wonder become narration. What we work on, and we will also uh, we suggest to every country is that uh, take this wonder and uh, uh, become narration. Fantastic! And uh, thank you for being with us as we come to you live from Astana in Kazakhstan, looking at Future Energy 2017 as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet. How far would you go? Maybe there's another way. People, the flood is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the inside scoop, Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV, coming to you live from Astana in Kazakhstan, talking about the Green Expo, Future Energy, 
2017. And I have a gentleman who's an actual expert in all of this work. This is Alessandro uh, Rosso. He is the president of World Expo Commissioners Club. And welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you very much. My name, as you said, is Alessandro Rosso, and we created the club, uh, World Expo Commissioner Club, in 2014, um, after we understood the value of Expo. Um, in, the, in the past, uh, Expo never had a continuity. It was uh, used and, and lost from each country every time without uh, keeping any track or information or uh, uh, knowledge. The commissioner, uh, many times, they were changing or changed year after year. So we decided that uh, uh, the know-how and the knowledge of this commissioner should have been kept and used in favor of the expos. So we created the first club worldwide where you never expire. So it's a club which is for life. And is at the moment, we have more than 120 countries enrolled. We have more than 1,000 members because you, to enroll to this club, you need to be a commissioner, vice commissioner, or a member of the diplomacy in charge of the expo. Now, looking at this whole thing, as far as the commissioner's club and this continuity that you're talking about, give us a little history as far as the importance of the expo and then why is it even more important to continue the, not only the glow, but the benefits of whatever that pa past expo is? Uh, the expo, in, in my opinion, uh, has been uh, changing its uh, uh, dress, let's say, coat, uh, in, in different periods of the years. And when it was invented, the expo was a, a big fair where this, the country, the, the single country was hosting, uh, was uh, showing the world, and the world was showing to the other people of the world the technology which was invented and created in the next uh, five years. Now, as everybody knows, with the internet and with all the information that we can get every two minutes and the launches of a product which is every half an hour, uh, that kind of job cannot be done by Expo anymore. So what is the job of Expo today? The job of Expo today is to make uh, the world meet. Uh, I would say that the Expo is like a G-180. No? It's, it's a place where Every single country, poor or rich, is going to meet with the other countries for a long period. And, uh, and together they will discuss on a theme. In, in, a, in our case in Astana will be the energy, the future life. So uh, one of the most important uh, theme because uh, is touching our kids, no? is the future of our world. So uh, the Expo is a fundamental event. It is uh, uh, nowadays done in uh, countries which were not normally uh, benefiting of this, and you can see it because it's moving from Europe, which was uh, for the majority of the or United States. Now, Europe and United States had the majority of the Expo, and then happened to go to China, which was an incredible success because 70 million people was never seen before, and China could show her modernity but also China could show the world to the Chinese. Now, after that expo, uh, quantity is not any more important because it's impossible to repeat, and Milano did a fantastic job to relaunch the expo in a, in a new way, which is the modernity and technology, and um, it's, a, it's an IT expo, the one who has happened in Milano, I would say, linked with the, with the saving the planet, food, and, uh, and food uh, is uh, one of the most important themes with energy because uh, we have a lot of poverty still. And the United States took this uh, subject very seriously. And I think um, Secretary Kerry also um, uh, put a, an objective to, to uh, um, finish the, 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 the food poverty by, I believe, 2020 or 2050. So Expo is a place where the world meets and uh, exchange and uh, get a new picture of what is going on. Tell us about these commissioners 
that are involved with the expo. You said it could be uh, diplomats, it could be ex-commissioners, or uh, you know those elk of people. What is it that they do with the expo? Uh, what and you see them doing for the future? Now. Um, to understand what is a commissioner, we need to go back uh, and think like a kid. Uh, very simple. No? Um, the world uh, is communicating through uh, organization. So if you want to uh, speak about diplomacy, you have a ministry. And from the ministry, you have created your ambassadors, your consul, and uh, which are located in the majority of the places of the world. And they have a job to do, which is keeping the relation between the countries. When you want uh, to uh, fight, you have the ministry of defense and uh, you have the army. No? And so those people are involved in fighting. Now, when we talk about commerce and uh, when we talk about, uh, um, uh, let's say, business and, uh, and uh, developing and distributing this business, normally, unfortunately, up to now, uh, the relation between the country, they were left uh, through the embassy, through the delegate uh, of the commercial affairs inside the embassy. Now, this guy uh, was dealing with single country at a time. Because uh, if I'm an American delegate in Italy, I will discuss uh, America and Italy. Now, the commissioners are instead a group of people which are, first of all, updated day by day because they don't belong uh, f uh, from a career. The majority of the time, they are selected by the prime minister or by the minister to be people which come from business, from, uh, from uh, international affairs and things like that and they live in their own country, which is another thing which makes them uh, more updated in any kind of business which is related to his country. Not always the ambassadors or the consul, uh, which are traveling the world every five years, are so much linked with the reality of the country in a single way. So the, the, the possibility of these 110 countries to meet by themselves to discuss business opportunities besides the expo is an incredible opportunity which the club of the commission is creating mm -hmm. looking at kazakhstan this is a very unique case it's a modern and a new country it's in its own very new capital but at the same time it's continuing a very ancient history and it was involved in international trade and commerce going back thousands of years. So in a way, it's like circled back and in a sense rediscovering itself. So how do you see the Expo and Kazakhstan moving forward together from 2017 as we go towards the middle of the century, 2050? Well, first of all, uh, Expo is a booster. So um, Kazakhstan uh, um, is a country which is in the world map, uh, but uh, is not often uh, discussed. Um, before the expo, I don't remember me thinking about Kazakhstan, not even once in a year. And uh, I'm traveling a lot. So uh, the expo is bringing attention to the country. And if the country has got something to say, this is the time to say it. So I believe that they, are, they, they took an incredible and, uh, and uh, courageous uh, decision to host the Expo, and uh, they are doing it very well, and they are doing it in a, in, a, in, a, in a fast and modern way. Astana is an incredible example of a city, and which is done uh, completely new, and with a lot of architecture, and, uh, and the Kazakh people are very friendly, are very modern, and uh, they need to be seen. We need to know more about Kazakhstan, about Kazakhstan people, about a country which is uh, very huge. Kazakhstan is, uh, could be big as half of Europe, uh, and it's got only 19 million people. So it's, a, it's an area where to come and live, where to come and explore. It's a new place for us, too, to come and, and, uh, and uh, put together our needs with their needs. So Expo, again, is one of the best, um, uh, let's say, place to do it. Uh, looking at uh, Kazakhstan, it's in the central, uh, center of Central Asia, Asia Minor. 
And so it's not only representing itself, it's really representing all of its neighbors to the region and to the world. So what do you suggest or how do you see Kazakhstan actually embracing all of its neighbors so that there's a common story, unique to Kazakhstan, of course, but yet a common story about what the region holds for the world? It's a very clever question. And uh, thank you for making it. I believe that uh, the cousins, let's call them like that, which are neighboring uh, Kazakhstan will benefit a lot and uh, they will have to take this occasion to participate to the expo as much as they can, not only with their pavilions, but also with their people. The, the people of the neighbors should come to see this expo, should come to show themselves and uh, and speak also and take the opportunity to speak with the press, which will be here for those three months, to let them know also about this area of, uh, of the East, which is not so well known. And Kazakhstan is a very lucky country because it's neighboring two big countries. One is Russia and one is China. Those big countries are huge markets. And uh, Kazakhstan can become an incredible producer of uh, raw materials uh, to export to those countries and you just need to import some technologies and, and some, uh, let's say, machineries and uh, to give more attention to this. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, this expo, which is talking about new energy, will produce its effect. Now, uh, we've just about run out of time, so we have maybe 30 to 40 seconds, so we need to be quick. What do you see for the role, the growth, expansion of your commissioner's club uh, for the future of this expo, 2017, and expos towards 2050? The commissioner club uh, uh, every year is getting new uh, commissioner and uh, this uh, will is making the commissioner club uh, more international and more variegated because uh, every commission is bringing his know-how and is bringing his uh, knowledge and is bringing his uh, uh, root to to his place and so uh, together they can become an incredible army of peace and commerce so I believe that uh, as it's a baby now, but uh, when he will be 20 years old or 21, he will reach maturity. He will have already done uh, Dubai and Beijing, and uh, he's doing Antalya this year, 2016, and Astana. So I, I can see the, the, the club uh, more or less around 10,000 people by 2020. That's fantastic. Well, if they have the energy, the interest, and the youthfulness that you have, it'll be very successful. Thank you for being with us as we come live from Astana and Kazakhstan to talk about Future Energy 2017. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Why don't you just wash your car at home? When I wash my car, everything runs down the street and down into the storm drains. With all the chemicals and the soaps and waxes, the last thing I want to do is poison my own drinking water. At least here, it's all contained and recycled on site. That's why I also take my car in for oil changes instead of doing it myself. I might take a chance on spilling stuff. You know what the best part is? What? More time to kick back and watch the game. <laughs> to tell which kids have trouble with their eyesight. But that's not always the case. Even though one in four children may have a vision problem, eye doctors tell us the symptoms aren't always so obvious. We do know that 80% of all childhood learning is visual. And without good vision, kids can have trouble learning to read. And may fall behind in school clues on how to spot the real life signs of childhood vision problems and what parents can do, visit checkyearly.com. A public service message from the Vision Council of America and reading is fundamental. Live from the Washington DC area, it's the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet 
all the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, the President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from Astana in Kazakhstan as we're here looking at the Expo for Future Energy 2017. And we're in one of these uh, very innovative and leading edge factories, the Astana Solar Company. And we got uh, Rustam Osam Bekov, who is the engineer and also our tour guide uh, throughout this very interesting facility. So, Rustam, thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for you for coming and visiting your, for your initiative of, for cooperation. Well, I think it's fantastic what is going on in Kazakhstan and that as a national policy, you want to move to where you have 50% renewable energy by 2050. Very ambitious. Tell us about the goals that you have currently and how will those gradually increase to 2050? So uh, we are working very um, hard to increase uh, the percentage of using of renewable energies because uh, according to our indicators, we have to have 3% of all uh, energy consumption in Kazakhstan in 2020 from renewable energy sources. So we have a lot of job to do and in 2030 we have to uh, have 30 percent from renewable energies and as you mentioned before we have to uh, have a uh, half of all consumption in 2050 from renewable energies. So we have to uh, do a big job now we have something like two percent so one percent still we have to make in uh, two or three years but uh, uh, energy demand and energy consumption in kazakhstan is growing uh, very fast and uh, day by day so we never stop to we are we're working very hard i think that's absolutely and fantastic though that the fact is that this is a constantly moving target because you think of it as, okay, we have this much consumption today, and it's like we can just build against that, but that's not the case. It does not work. Because the renewable uh, energy and the total energy consumption is increasing a year to year uh, in Kazakhstan, and so it's uh, very challenging. Actually, you, you, we still don't know how much we shall take from a renewable energy, because the consumption, total consumption, is also increasing. Well, uh, well that says uh, good things about the economy and the society of Kazakhstan because you're improving the quality of life, you're improving the day-to-day -day, uh, access to energy by the citizens, so that also means that business is increasing in Kazakhstan. Is that correct? Yes, sure, it's very correct because uh, we are developing the quality of our citizens. Some citizens that uh, had never electricity before, now they have electricity because uh, they could buy our solar panels. And also, as you mentioned, uh, the business is also taking a very active participation in this, all of these processes. And of course, it's a good uh, will of our uh, government. It's a good uh, government policy in this area that we can develop this very, this, uh, very rapidly. Mm. Tell us a little bit about the Astana Solar, a little bit of the history and uh, what is going on within your factory here. So Astana Solar is only one uh, step of the project called CASPV. CASPV is a project that uh, developing the solar uh, power energy in Kazakhstan. So basically we have uh, everything made in Kazakhstan starting from our raw materials, silicon in Almaty, making a cell and assembling here in uh, Astana. But also there's another city that's involved. There isn't there an intermediate step on this? So you really are having a unified supply chain to having the solar panels. 
Yes, sure. As uh, you told, there are three steps. And first step is the raw material. Uh, we take it from Almaty region, city of Ustabe. Then second step is uh, city Uskaminagorsk, where they made solar cells. And third step is uh, Astana, Astana Solar, where we assemble the uh, solar panels using our solar cells. Of course, we have uh, other uh, um, raw materials like uh, glass and EVA and TPT and we are taking it from abroad but cell is in Kazakhstan. Well I think another part of the uh, impressive nature of this is that you're collaborating with the country of France and uh, uh, and also Spain and uh, also companies within those areas. Tell us a little bit about the cooperation that you have both with France and also with Spain. Okay, uh, so now at the production plant we are using a French technology. We are working in collaboration with Semco Engineering and the Mondragon Assembly. Also we are using some equipment uh, that were made in Germany. And at the beginning of the project our staff uh, had uh, some training courses at abroad in Spain, in France also. So, of course, sure, we are calibrating with uh, these countries because they had a hu huge experience of solar uh, power production before, earlier than we. Now, uh, Kazakhstan is one country in Asia Minor, within Central Asia, and so tell us a little bit about uh, the surrounding countries. Are you one of the leaders as far as solar is concerned? Or are you the only country that's producing right now the solar within the Central Asia region? So we, are, we have a following uh, neighbors like uh, Russia, China, and Azerbaijan. So, but uh, as you know, the China is becoming uh, the most world uh, leading solar panels producer. So uh, it's a very uh, big... Uh, so uh, China is a big... Uh, yeah, but looking uh, at look Central Asia, like Central Tajikistan, Asia, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, and Kyrgyzstan I mean, these are the ones I was they, talking about. They may have solar panels, but the leaders in Central Asia is uh, our aim, at least our aim, to make to be a leader in Central Asia. Right, okay. Now, yeah, that's, that's what we're referring to. Now, looking at uh, the nation itself, you're actually increasing the training, the technology transfer into Kazakhstan. You're training more and more people in order to manufacture mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, solar panels, but also the installation so uh, as far as the installation, is this something that's done by local construction companies or where, who trains and who installs the panels once they leave your factory? Okay, about installation, it is not a big problem for our uh, constructing companies because they have a huge uh, experience in this area and we are not uh, working in collaboration with our it was other countries because um, in our country itself we have a good uh, specialist in this area so uh, only f at the beginning of the project we started with the uh, foreign technologies and what uh, about uh, installation it's we are, we can do it by ourselves now we were looking at one of the charts that you have here that uh, goes back several years and you're saying now we have uh, installations of the solar panels over the whole uh, Kazakhstan nation. Tell us a little bit about the growth as far as the projects that are going on around the country. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the beginning of the project, there were no uh, solar uh, power stations in Kazakhstan made uh, from our panels. And now our solar panels are uh, in all cities and regions in Kazakhstan almost, except we had also a, a foreign uh, customer. We sell some s our solar panels in Russia, uh, increasing uh, energy consumption, increasing very fast. So uh, it, it doesn't matter for customers where, where from they taking, are they taking from the uh, natural resources are they taking from the renewable energies mm -hmm. anyway 
it's it's uh, energy anyway yeah. so uh, well but the whole thing is is that the uh, demand is growing for solar panels across the whole country yeah, sure. and not just in certain areas so you're able to cover the whole country then you know from this uh, production facility we we can do that because our capacity uh, is 50 megawatts per year mm -hmm. and with um, prospect of increasing up to 100 megawatts so I'm sure that uh, in several years we are able to cover all Kazakhstan with our solar panels only. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we, I mean, we do not need another company producing solar panels in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing is, is that you're going to be doubling or you have the potential to double yes. uh, your production over the next in, few years. In case, in case if we will have a good uh, demand from our customers, it's not a problem for us to double our production in I think in two or uh, three months, I think, I'm sure. Now, the whole thing about it is Kazakhstan itself is uh, having this national policy. It wants to increase by 2050, 50% 50 of the capacity comes from renewable energy. What is your feeling as an engineer and here at Stana Solar about this demand from the government that we're moving the whole society towards a renewable energy? Well, well, it's a good uh, policy for, for our government, I think, because they are making our uh, lives better. Uh, that's uh, they should do, <laughs> yeah. and they are trying to do it. Uh, anyway, uh, renewable energy is the um, only way of uh, developing this world, I think, because uh, coal and gas and uh, like this, they are making a very bad uh, influence on our ecology, but uh, solar panels, they do not uh, some bad influence. So I think the environment, yeah. only Well, the whole thing about it is that it seems like the Kazakh people have bought into the notion and the emphasis of the government that we must have more renewable energy and uh, order to protect the environment. And uh, we're about out of time, so what's the feeling of Kazakh people about your environment because of your love of nature, love of the land, and love of the country? Uh, we have a policy in this area also. We are protecting our environment. Of course, such a big uh, country is like uh, such a big cities uh, like uh, Almaty, our previous capital has some problems with ecology, but our young uh, capital Astana has no problems with ecology, you can see, because it's uh, green, uh, highly developed, uh, highly technology, uh, city with, I think uh, you were here for uh, four or five days. Correct, yeah. <laughs> you it's, can, a you, you it's a beautiful can, city. You can answer yourself this question. Well, it's uh, very important to, uh, to balance this as far as renewable energy, to protect or even enhance the environment of the country. And uh, thank you for letting us come here to Astana Solar to uh, look around to uh, see the uh, technology that you have here and the work you're doing within Kazakhstan. And thank you, for, dear viewer, for being with us as we come live from Astana and Kazakhstan as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet.